Good morning, Shadydale Church of God. I trust everyone is doing well today and is blessed. Today is June 13th, 2021. This is week two of our summer Sunday school lesson. And uh, before we get started, if you will allow me, I would like to uh, just say I am thankful that uh, God spared my mother to see her 85th birthday on Saturday, June the 12th. <clears throat> and me and my wife and Marche was able to celebrate with her. So thank God for that. But now getting into our lesson, why are you afraid? Okay, what, what is our study about today? People often lose confidence amidst the storms of persecution, rejection, and poverty. Fearing they would not survive the windstorm out on the lake, the disciples turned to Jesus to save them. So our Bible passage is going to come from Matthew 8, 23 through 27. The topics that will be discussed is faith, peace, and Jesus' power. <laughs> Jesus' power. I like that. That's stronger than black power or white power or any man's power. Amen. Let's take a look at our Bible background. Jesus displayed his power over nature and the, na and the natural elements of his life. He also addressed the frailty and weakness of the faith of the disciples. Today's lesson raises the stakes of our faith exponentially from the everyday occurrences we encounter. It deals with real palpable fears and goes into uh, pessimism versus optimism, goes beyond pessimism versus optimism. Jesus and his disciples were in a small boat on a storm-tossed sea, and death by drowning was a very real threat. The preponderance of evidence indicated that they would be going down. This was no idle threat. Some of these men were familiar with storms at seas, and they knew the danger of their situation. Amen. One of the things that this lesson is going to teach us is just because our knowledge, our limited knowledge that we have, no matter how great we think our knowledge is, it is limited in the eyes of God. No matter what our knowledge is, it is minuscule, it is minimal, it is little or nothing compared to God's ability, God's knowledge, and God's wisdom. Okay, and so uh, here we have fishermen. Um, some of the disciples were fishermen. They've been on the seas. They, they, they've been used to these type of situations. But yet when this storm came, they panicked. Okay, and they panicked big time. And, um, and so we're going to get into the lesson. It's going to explain this. And, the, and the, But the thing I just want us to understand is uh, instead of panicking, have faith. And when we have faith, we can have peace. And when we have faith and peace, we will have Jesus' power. How about that? Amen. All right. Now, uh, if you will allow me to, I will stop sharing that. And then I will go to our <clears throat> Bible reading from Bible Gateway audio uh, player. And, um, and we will have them to read our Sunday school lesson for us. And we're going to start with Matthew 8, um, verses 23 through 35. Okay. Uh, okay, let me make sure I get my, got to do this the right way. Bear with me here. Got it. Okay, here we go. Then he got into the boat, and his disciples followed him. Suddenly a furious storm came up on the lake, so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. All right. So commentary says the Sea of Galilee, like the great Lake Superior, can muster up a squall with unexpected suddenly and, and fury. With unexpected suddenness and fury. 
such as the case in today's storm. Jesus and his disciples got into the boat, no doubt, in calm water. However, once they went out into the deep, a furious storm came up on the lake. Huge waves rocked the boat, rose high above the bow, and broke the torrent over the sides and into the boat. And they, they were taking on water, but Jesus was sleeping, evidently enjoying a pretty deep sleep even a pretty deep sleep, given all the mo uh, movement and noise that had surrounded him. The disciples concluded that the boat was about to sink under the water's weight or be broken apart by the waves. Uh, and they sought out Jesus in panic desperation. The way the verse is worded conveys the idea they woke Jesus not by calmly touching his shoulder or gently shaking him, but rather by shouting at him, Lord, save us. Uh, we're going to drown. Some of these men, Peter, for instance, uh, were seasoned fishermen. They had experienced storms at seas before. The fury of this storm, though struck them with terror, evidently, is beyond anything they had ever experienced. Uh, to drown is a terrible way to die. In the middle of the lake, uh, in the midst of the storm, there was little hope of swimming to shore. Now, what this is telling us is they got out into the boat. And, and, and the thing you have to understand, the reason they were in the boat is because Jesus instructed them to get in the boat. Jesus said, come on, get in the boat. Let's go across the lake. Okay. So the captain of the ship, Jesus, gave the command for the disciples to get in the boat and take off and go across the, the, the lake. And so that's what they were doing. They were following instruction. So they were doing what they were supposed to do, but then came fear. <laughs> fear can be a terrible thing sometimes, all right? And so uh, as a storm came up, you know, everything that they knew said they were going to drown. Now, the good news is when that fear got a hold to them, they called on Jesus. See, they didn't jump out the boat and say, hey, every man for themselves, right? They could have done that. Had Jesus not been there, Huh, they just might have. But because Jesus was there, so what am I saying? Jesus is there for each and every one of us. Jesus is in our lives. So not if the storm comes, but when our storm comes, let's not jump overboard. Okay, let's not panic too much. At the end of the day, make sure we have called and depended upon Jesus, okay? He's there for us, just like he was there for the disciples. It might seem like he's asleep. It might seem like he got no clue what's going on, but Jesus knows. <laughs> God knows. The Holy Spirit knows. And sometimes they just want us to call on them, put our faith in them, right? Uh, what little bit of faith we have, let's put it in the Almighty God. Let's put it in Jesus right? And let him do his thing. Okay, let's go on. Verse 26. He replied, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. All right, then. Now, it says the first words to the panicked disciples question their faith and their reason for their fear. His remarks seem rather callous, and even uh, inappropriate to us, given the situation. Uh, why should there be, why should the disciples not be afraid? They were in a storm that clearly threatened their lives. They were a, this is a look back at verse 18 is helpful. This is where a look back at verse 18 was, is helpful. Jesus said, Jesus had ordered the disciples to cross to the other side of the lake. They were just doing what they had been instructed to do. Okay, sounds familiar. And this is, and this was no ordinary boat captain who gave these orders. 
with Jesus, there had been a clear there there had been clear signs that he was much more than an ordinary person and that his intentions and that his intentions carried an uncommon weight. It seemed that the disciples had no association between what they had already seen Jesus do in the preceding portion of chapter 8 and their present situation. First, Jesus rebuked them from failing in faith for not believing as relevant as the powerful acts Jesus had already performed. But, I'm sorry, uh, he then rebuked them for their fears. By doing so, he made a direct correlation between faith and fear. And they had had faith, had they had faith, they would have not had fear. Let me repeat that. If they had had faith, they would not have had fear. If one's faith is sufficient, there will be no fearful. They will be, they will not be fearful. I'm sorry. The one governs the other. Jesus then rose, rebuked the winds and the waves, and all became calm. And peace and quiet surrounding the boat must have seemed definite. All right. So the disciples panicked. They called on Jesus. They woke him up, hollering and screaming, Jesus, wake up. Don't you care? Man, we're about to drown. Come on. You know, how can you sleep? Hmm. I know how. <laughs> But uh, this, this is interesting in this commentary. It says that um, uh, they feared because they had a lack of faith. Think about that. When we fear something, whatever the situation is, we fear we might get fired. We fear the car won't start. We fear our loved one, our family member, our, our mother, our father is going to do something to us. We fear our spouse is going to get mad at us, going to leave us. We fear, we fear, we fear. Whatever it is we fear, we fear we're going to get laid off. We're going to get fired. We fear we're not going to make it to work on time. We're going to get rolled up. We fear all kinds of things. We fear our health uh, is going to fail. We fear the doctor's report. We fear these things. I challenge us to replace that fear with faith. Have faith in Jesus that our family members are going to be all right. Have faith in Jesus that God's going to take care of our, our, our spousal situation. Have faith in Jesus that even if this job is taken away from us, God's going to give us what we need. He will supply our needs, what? According to his riches and glory. And how about this? His riches and glory exceeds our needs, right? And so we need to replace our fear with faith, okay? And so it says, if they had had faith, they would not have had fear. So I say to each and every one of us, if we have faith in the almighty God, and Jesus Christ, the Son, in the Holy Spirit, we will not have fear. Well, why would you say that, Brother Williams? Because that's what I'm getting from the Word. Okay? So, uh, and think about it. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Ah. But a truth and a sound mind. So, where are we getting fear from? God didn't give it to us. It's a trick of the adversary. Okay. The adversary wants us to be scared. Okay. The adversary uh, uh, wants us to concentrate on what might happen and have fear versus what's going to happen and have faith that God's going to make it all right. Okay. So, um, Jesus woke up, he got up, first he, re, he, he uh, rebuked them, told them, little faith, you know, you know, y'all just saw me do all these miracles. How all of a sudden now you just crying like a little baby? How all of a sudden now you lost your faith? Okay, he chastised them for that. Then he turned around and said, look, 
wind, rain, yeah, chill. <laughs> he rebuked the winds and the waves, and they became calm. Now, when they said he rebuked it, he, he didn't say nothing about he went to a long dissertation of prayer. Oh, God, you know, God, you see us here, God. God's a holler. No, he rebuked the waves, the wind. And they were calm. Whoo, hallelujah. Let's go to verse 27. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. <laughs> All right. The disciples were amazed. Uh, they revealed that they had no inkling, no idea whatsoever that Jesus had authority over the forces of nature. In a way, they revealed their own ideas about his uh, hierarchy of miracles. Evidently, the forces that govern health and well-being were less powerful than those that govern uh, nature. But they now knew that even the winds and the waves obeyed Jesus. These great things, too, they obeyed him. How amazing. Note that not Note that they didn't ask who this man was, but rather what kind of man he was. He was a, re a uh, revealing, this was a revealing moment. Um, this event took the disciples and the readers to a new level of understanding about the nature and capabilities of Jesus. Uh, we learn that we should not be too hard on ourselves when we might feel that we are too slow to grow in faith. In short order, these men saw Jesus heal leprosy, drive out demons, and even conduct a remote healing. But it would take the power of the Holy Spirit poured out at Pentecost, Pentecost to help them truly get it. Now understand something. Powerful lesson. What are your fears? Okay, what obstacles in life are you looking at that you think just cannot be overcome? Cancer, tuberculosis, lying, cheating, stealing, whatever it is, overeating, drugs, alcohol, right? Whatever it is, uh, unemployed, underemployed, think you're going to lose your job they, they said they already gave you a two-week notice right about to get evicted right god has control over it all if he can control the winds and the no back up stop since he can control that if we already know he can he can control the winds and the waves why can't he control that individual or that individual or your situation, whatever it is? Shady Dale, what am I telling you? Don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. We have nothing to be afraid of. Uh, uh, we should have our faith and trust in Jesus. And once we do, everything's going to work out fine. So let's have more faith and less fear. Less fear and more faith. Amen. And from that, we'll get the power of Jesus. God bless you. I uh, hope you were able to get something out of the Sunday school lesson. I hope you enjoyed the Sunday school lesson. God bless you. I love you. And guess what? <laughs> there ain't nothing you can do about it. Have a blessed day.